Good morning. Good morning. Hi, my name is Ben Selby. I am 10 years old and I am in the fifth grade at Eden Elementary School. I am so glad to be here this morning to welcome you to Children's Sabbath. First of all, I wanted to start our morning off with a joke or two. Did you know I was a comedian? <laughs> well, did you? Well, I am, and maybe even better than Pastor David. <laughs> Just kidding, Pastor David. See, I already made you laugh. What type of car would Jesus have driven? A Chrysler. Thank you. What animal could Noah not trust? The cheetah. Okay. Now, for the announcements. There will be a free shred event this Wednesday from 8 to 11 a.m. here at the church. Bring all your paper documents to be disposed of in a safe way. Our next STARS luncheon, STARS stands for Senior Stocking and Remembering the Seasons, by the way, is also this Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Sign up on the Deep Boots bulletin boards. I wonder if they get mixed up. Lastly, the Stir Not Shaking Adult Social for the 30s to 50s Club, my mom and dad's age, will be Thursday, May 18th. The RSVP deadline is this Thursday, so please see the bulletin insert on how to RSVP. Don't forget to book those sitters. That's all I have today. Enjoy the service, and thank you.
please stand and join us in the call to worship. This is the day found in your bulletin. This is the day day. that the Lord has made. made. Let us rejoice rejoice. and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Please join us in singing the opening hymn found on page 600 in your hymnal. Please join me in saying the children's affirmation of faith found in your bulletin. We believe in God who loves us and wants us to love each other. This is our God. We believe in Jesus who cared about children and held them in his arms. He wanted a world where everyone could live together in peace. This is Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit who keeps working with us until everything is good and true. This is the Holy Spirit. We can be the church which reminds the people of God because we love each other. This we believe. Amen. Good morning. 
We hope you are enjoying Children's Sabbath so far. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Now, please turn to your neighbor and pass the peace of Christ. Today I will be reading Psalm 18, 1 through 6. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangle me. The torrents of destruction overwhelm me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I called to my God. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, I heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks to be God. Good morning. Our children's choir will be singing a song for you based on verse Luke 6.31, which says, Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We know this is our golden rule. Enjoy the anthem. bow your heads and join me in the morning prayer. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day and for our beautiful church family. Thank you for giving us comfortable homes, plenty of good food to eat and water to drink. We pray that you help us to take good care of the earth which you have given us. We also pray for the leaders of our community 
and world, that they will make decisions that honor and take care of your gifts for us. We pray for those on our prayer list and for those we lift up now in our hearts. These things we ask in the, in the name of your Son who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as ye forgive those who trespass against us. For thine is, into the temptation, but deliver us from me. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the ushers will come forward to receive our offering. This is one of my favorite books, The Cat in the Hat. Who can tell me some of the main characters? The Cat in the Hat? The 
cat in the hat. Okay. Yeah. Thing one. Thing one. Okay. Thing two. Thing two. Okay. Well, who is the main character? Cat in the hat. Yeah. <laughs> the cat in the hat. Okay. Who are some of the other characters? The boy and the girl, okay. The goldfish. The goldfish. <laughs> Let me. Um, the fish. The fish, okay. Yeah. Anybody else? The kids. The kids, yeah. okay. How do you know the cat in the hat is the main character of the book? Good, yeah. He's on the front and he's on lots of the pages, right? Who knows what this is? The Bible. Bible. Yes. Who are some of the main characters of the Bible? Jesus. Yes. Um, who are some other people who are in the Bible? Babe. Oh, yes. Okay. Um... The Bible mentions a lot of people, but none of those people, not even Jesus, gets as much attention as the main character. The main character of the Bible is God. The Bible tells us how God made the world, how he led the people of Israel, how he sent Jesus to die on the cross for us, how he sent the Holy Spirit into our hearts to teach us, and how he's going to make a special place for us in heaven. The story of the Bible is all about God. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us the story about you. Help us to spend time reading it this week so that we can get to know more about you. Amen. Amen. Does, any, does anybody want any Hershey Kisses? Come up and get some. Just take one. Just take one. And you can come up and get them. Good morning. Good morning. The scripture lesson for you today is from Mark chapter 10, 13, cha um, 13 through 16. Pe people were bringing little children to, for Jesus to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never <laughs> enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Abe. Good morning, everyone. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good to be with you today. Um, some of you, including uh, many of our children, have been here for three services uh, today. And uh, our kids have done such a great job. How about we give them a big hand? If there's one thing I've learned today, it's that... Um, we probably need to create some sort of outreach ministry that includes Hershey, giving away Hershey Kisses on the Causeway in order to get more people to come to church, because uh, that seems to have worked today. Uh, but actually, I've learned a lot um, from the kids throughout the morning. Um, it's great uh, hearing Abe uh, read the, the scripture about letting the little children uh, come to Jesus. Um, hearing those words from a child himself, I think, uh, makes it that much more profound. Um, but also, earlier on, as, uh, as Camille was reading from uh, Psalm 18, um, that just takes on a completely different um, experience for me as an adult. 
I always imagine an adult writing Psalm 18, but to hear a child talk about crying out to the Lord makes me wonder what are the cries that our children have. Um, and we'll discuss that a little bit within the uh, sermon this morning. Um, also, hearing a child lead us in prayer. Um, I'm, I'm used to having children uh, sing uh, before, and, uh, and they did such a great job with that. Um, but to, to, to take all of our prayer concerns and lift them up to the Lord um, to see the leadership that these folks uh, have brought to us today has just been really profound. So I appreciate it, each and every one of uh, these kids and, and the time that they spent in leading us uh, throughout the day. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, we give you thanks for um, not just all of these children, but um, the children of our community and the children around the world. May we also hear the cries of the children, um, the needs that they have, and provide the protection and provision and the love and care that they need. Lord, um, in your eyes, we are all children, and so um, may we learn to be like little children and have the trust and faith that is necessary to enter into your kingdom. Lord, open up our hearts even now so that we might hear your word proclaimed. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody here seen the movie Pretty Woman? Just a few of you. Okay, great. Well, there's a famous scene in this movie, Pretty Woman, where uh, Julia Roberts' character goes clothes shopping on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. Now, if you've never seen the movie, it's, uh, it's a modern retelling of the Cinderella story, um, but that does not mean that it is uh, appropriate for all ages, if you know what I mean. Um, but if you have seen the movie, then you know exactly the scene that I'm talking about. Vivian, played by Julia Roberts, has been given plenty of money to go spend on some nice new clothes, but the sales clerks at the upscale clothing store take one look at her wild hair and her shabby dress, and they don't want to have anything to do with her. So Vivian goes back to the hotel where she's staying, and she speaks to the manager there, and she says, I'm supposed to buy a dress for this upcoming dinner, a nice fancy dress, and I've got all this money, but nobody will help me. So the nice hotel manager then makes arrangements for her to go shopping at a friend's store and gets everything taken care of. So then, the next day, with her new dress on and her hair pulled back and a fancy hat and fancy shoes um, and bags and bags of clothes, she walks back back to the first store, the upscale store, and she goes up to the clerk that ignored her the day before and says, hi, do you remember me? I was in here yesterday. You wouldn't wait on me. You work on commission, right? Now, what does she say after that? Big mistake. Big, mistake. Big huge, right? And as she leaves, she says, I have to go shopping now. Obviously, Vivian is making the point that the clerks at the upscale shop should have taken her more seriously. Well, Christ's disciples in our story for today were about to make the same mistake. No, they weren't about to miss out on a huge commission, but they were about to ignore some really important people. Busy, pushed, stressed out about so many truly urgent things, they were suddenly intruded upon by a group of mothers who want their children to meet Jesus. Children, the disciples answered, we don't have time for children. There are sick folks to heal and lessons to teach and Pharisees to challenge and temples to cleanse and thrones to overthrow. Uh, we, we don't bother the teacher with children. And as the rejected mothers were about to turn away, Jesus realized what took place. Mark, the author of our gospel for the day, puts it this way. When Jesus saw what had happened, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall never enter it. Then he took them in his arms and he blessed them. The disciples almost turned away the very ones whom Jesus called the closest to the kingdom of God. 
Now, it impresses me on reading this story that Jesus took the time to laugh, hug, and play with little kids. You know, we could have included this scene in our Lenten series, for Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He was embarking upon the final episode of his mortal life. Jesus is journeying to the cross. Now, one would think, with all of that looming before him, he would have felt that the time for play and laughter had gone. But even then, even there, the Savior made time for children. There was something about them that got very close to the heart of our Savior. There's something about children that ordinarily gets close to the hearts of all who follow them. Now, we clergy, we usually steer away from using a lot of cliches in our sermons. They are weary, they are worn, most of you have heard them already, and a lot of them are actually directly opposed to the scriptures. So it's best to avoid them whenever possible. However, when the topic at hand is children, there's no getting around the use of cliches because one by one, they sometimes turn out to be true. For instance, children really are our most precious natural resource. You've heard that before, right? Or um, the children are our future. I think Whitney Houston even sang about that at one point. Or better yet, children aren't the future. Children are the present. I like that one a lot. Well, if that's true, listen to these statistics. According to the Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina, more than 12,000 children in New Hanover County are food insecure. 12,000 children in our county. I spoke with a social worker from New Hanover High School to prepare for this sermon, and she told me that district-wide we have more than 1,000 children right here in our county who do not have permanent housing. That doesn't mean they're sleeping under a bridge, but it's often the case they're sleeping on someone's couch because they do not have a home of their own. A thousand. The Center for Homeland Defense and Security keeps a record of all school shootings. When I graduated high school in 1989, there were 19 school shootings across America, which is 19 too many. When my daughter graduated high school last year, there were 302, including one that she witnessed with her very own eyes from just 15 feet away. Suicide is now the second leading cause of death of teenagers in America. Dennis Campbell, the former dean of Duke Divinity School, is unquestionably accurate in his assessment that we are guilty of giving our children too much to live with, but not enough to live for. Too much to live with, and not enough to live for. Our most precious natural resources. And yet, look what's happening to them. Maybe those things aren't happening in your home, but does it happen to anyone we know? The school shooting at New Hanover High School did. Your kids and grandkids probably have a bed to sleep in and food to eat, but that's not necessarily the case with all their classmates. Children need and deserve the very best that we have to offer in protection, nurture, education, role modeling, the allotment of our time, the sharing of our faith, and in the generous provision of our lives. Jesus took them in his arms and blessed them. Something about children that gets to the heart of Jesus and should be at the heart of all that follow him. Another important consideration not to miss, though, is that not only do children need us, but we adults need them. There is a tremendous amount that we mature, sophisticated adults can and should learn from little kids. The disciples thought they knew all about God. That they knew all about God's will. They knew all about God's love. Um, but Jesus told them, whoever does not receive the kingdom like a child shall not enter it. Or as another translation puts it, except you believe with the faith of a child, you shall have no part of the kingdom. In other words, said Jesus, no matter how skilled or erudite these disciples thought they were, the children were closer to the truth than they were. They still had so much to learn. 
And that really hasn't changed all that much from Christ's day to ours. For example, we learn about trust from children. There is not one ounce of doubt in a child's mind that mommy has some magical special power and really can kiss a hurt and make it all go away, right? That is trust that transcends logic. Absolute confidence in the protective power and unfailing love of a parent. Jesus said that God is enabled to do far more with our lives if we experience that same sort of trust than ever could be done otherwise. You see, doubt builds barriers, but trust opens doors. Except you believe with the faith of a child, he said. You'll limit what God can do with your life. Except you trust with the faith of a child. You know, children also teach us a great deal about faith. A pastor friend of mine posted that during her very hectic Holy Week, her platter was extraordinarily full with a lot of church activities. There was a, Mon a Monday Thursday service to plan, a Good Friday community service the very next day, a sunrise service, and most of all, there were those big jammed Sunday morning Easter worship services where everybody was going to show up, and she was really excited about it all, only to follow all of that with a trip to the grandparents' house. So the entire week, it was Easter this, Easter that, Easter plans, Easter services, and then one evening at dinner, it was her five-year-old's turn to say grace. And at the end of his God is great, God is good prayer, he added, and God, please help Jesus to feel better. Mom turned to her husband and said, you know what he's talking about? He didn't know what he's talking about. So she turned to her son, and he told her that, well, his Sunday school teacher had been telling them about the cross and how Jesus suffered there for all of us. So he prayed, aware of the suffering of Jesus, while she, the theologically astute pastor, during Holy Week, had mentally jumped right past the suffering and was only concerned with the victory celebration on Sunday. A lot of us do that, don't we? We jump past one thing to get ready for the next. Children teach us great lessons about faith. Especially, I suspect, because they get to the heart of the matter. They are so honest. Children, more than anyone else, seem to understand intuitively that at the heart of Christianity is Jesus himself. His life, his death, his resurrection, his relationship with us. Which, additionally, I think, connects us to one another. And that's where children, once again, share powerful secrets about where, how we're supposed to treat one another. For example, I grew up in an all-white neighborhood. And like many of you, I went to an intentionally integrated school due to carefully drawn district lines and busing. I remember my elementary school days back in the 1970s. Everyone played with everyone on the playground. When it was time to play Red Rover, which is too dangerous to play nowadays, you didn't care if the people you were playing with were African American, Asian American, Hispanic, white, or Native American. Um, when you played dodgeball, which has also been considered too dangerous to play in the 21st century, um, we didn't care what color you were, we just played. And when you got on top of one of those big, gigantic, geodesic, dome jungle gyms that no longer exist because, yes, they too are too dangerous to play with. You just had fun. We were kids. We didn't realize the color of one's skin made any difference. We thought people were neat just because they were people. And I think children grow up, I don't know, somehow they're born colorblind, but we somehow teach them otherwise and we teach them to be divided maybe there's a lesson there for us sophisticated grown-ups a lesson about who is or who is not worthy of our kindness and our care 
Maybe children know better than anyone else that it's not the color of one's skin or their gender, the size of one's home or their car or their political affiliation or anything else that makes a person worthy or special. Children seem to understand that everyone is worthy just because God made them. And that's enough. Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, said Jesus, for to such as these belong the kingdom of God. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not enter the kingdom as a child shall not enter it. Years ago, I came across a really, what I think is a really great poem. And I was, um, I was looking back on the internet this week uh, to make sure I got the words right. And I was also looking for the author. I never did find the author. Um, but whoever this author is clearly comprehended the Christ-likeness of children. The author understood that to be like Jesus, we must somehow be like little kids. And, and this is what they wrote. They wrote, there's something quite nice about children. Every family should have one or two. They're such a fine race when they're kept in their place, say the playground, the park, or the zoo. In his place, a child's quite delightful, full of fun, a most interesting buddy, but his yearning for action can cause a distraction when he has invaded the study. The office is no place for children. They foul up our work with their fun. So we make it a rule that they must go to school so the elders can get something done. Some children came searching for Jesus. His friends were distressed and inclined to think, oh, how terrible to have a fresh parable suddenly slip from his mind. So they tried to get rid of the children. Surely no major disgrace protecting their master from certain disaster by keeping the children in place. Let the children come in, shouted Jesus, then said something frightfully odd. They are bearers of grace, and their ultimate place is right smack in the kingdom of God. Well, the place of a child is the kingdom. That's what Jesus carefully taught. So the last time you did play some ball with your kid, you were closer to God than you thought. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for kids, for their life, for their love, for their laughter. Lord, for the ways that they grow, for the ways that they teach us how to have faith and trust and love. Lord, help us to take on that same innocence, that same yearning and dependence on you, our Heavenly Father. Lord, teach us to be more like the kids. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today is found on page 601. Um, Let's stand and sing together, Thy Word is a Lamp, 601.
The group of singers that's going to come up and dismiss us here in just a minute are a group of fifth graders who will be uh, graduating out of Children of Joy and making their way into our 412 youth program. And so we're glad to have them uh, sing for us uh, one last time as a group. And, uh, but before they do, I want to send you on your way with the benediction. Now, benediction is a word that literally means good <coughs> word. Good word. And here is the good word that God thinks of all of us as his children. And we simply need to trust and have faith and love him and recognize that there is no hindrance between us and God. And not only that, but we, just like kids, should be able to go forth and share a good word with others, because they too are God's children. Go forth in peace, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Right.